Question 6. Which of the following is not a use of optical fibers? Is it endoscopic surgery, the transmission of data, the guiding of light waves, or the magnification of images? So we have a few options. Let's go through them. A. Endoscopic surgery. Now in an endoscope, we need to have a way of getting light into the cavity and a way of getting light out. In an endoscope, both of those will be using optical fibers. So optical fibers in this case make keyhole surgery possible. How about the next option? The transmission of data. Now we know that optical fibers can transmit light without losing any energy. And they can transmit it over long distances. And we know that it's possible to encode information in light. Optical fibers are in fact very useful for transmitting data long distances. Is it C, the guiding of light waves? Now in both endoscopic surgery and the transmission of data, one of the big advantages of using optical fibers is that we can guide light in whichever direction we want it. So in fact, option C relates to both A and to B. So the guiding of light waves is pretty much the reason that we use optical fibers. And so it can't be the right answer. Our last option then is D, the magnification of images. Now remember that when we covered lenses and mirrors, we found forms of each that could be used to magnify an image. Optical fibers, however, aren't used for this purpose. And so D is the correct answer. Images are magnified by lenses or by mirrors, not by optical fibers. Question seven, between which layers of an optical fiber does total internal reflection occur? Is it the core and the cladding, the cladding and the sheath, the sheath and the outside environment, or all of the above? And I'll give you a clue, it's not all of the above. And the reasons for this will become clear as we go through the other ones. If we were to say C, the sheath and the outside environment, it would mean that the outside environment must have a higher refractive index than the sheath. The problem is we can't guarantee that. I mean, supposing we're embedding an optical fiber inside diamond for whatever reason, diamond has a very, very high refractive index and so it'll be almost possible to get total internal reflection occurring in the sheath. How about the cladding and the sheath? Now the sheath is a protective layer around the optical fiber, and it doesn't actually have anything to do with the total internal reflection. We don't need to worry about what its refractive index is. Our last option, if it's not all of the above, is going to be A, the core and the cladding. And this is in fact the correct answer. So the core must have a very high refractive index, and the cladding around it must have a very low refractive index. The total internal reflection occurs within the core as light tries to pass from the core into the cladding but is unable to. Question eight. If the refractive index of an optical fiber's core is 1.62 and that of the cladding is 1.52, find the critical angle at the boundary between them. So what do we use here? Snell's law. What's Snell's law again? It's to do with signs and refractive indices, right? It looks something like this. The sign of the critical angle, or if we really wanted to say it, the sign of the critical angle divided by the sine of 90 degrees equals n2 over n1. That's how we define the critical angle. So all we need to do is substitute in our refractive indices. Taking the inverse sine, we have the inverse sine of 1.52 over 1.62 will equal our critical angle. So evaluating this, we'll end up with an angle of 69.8 degrees. So remember, this is the angle to the normal. If I draw the inside of the optical fiber like this, with the top and the bottom of the optical fiber, then the normal will be perpendicular to that. And so this 70 degrees or so will look like this. So at angles smaller than this, we'll get light refracting and going into the cladding. At angles larger than this, so any light coming in at this angle, for example, will get total internal reflection and no refraction whatsoever. Remember that when we refract, uh, when we get total internal reflection, we're not refracting. The only way that we can get this is if we're moving from a material with a very high refractive index into a material with a low refractive index. For example, water into air. Question nine. Explain why it is essential that the cladding of an optical fiber has a lower refractive index than the fiber. Now I've just mentioned this. Can you still remember the answer? It has to do, of course, with the fact that you can't get a sine of any angle that is greater than one. You can, however, end up with a sine of an angle that will be less than one. 
So for total internal reflection, the cladding must have a refractive index lower than that of the core. And the reason for this is that light trying to move into a higher refractive index will always succeed in refracting. That is, if we're moving light from air into water, there will always be an angle of refraction that's possible. And so we can never get total internal reflection. On the other hand, if we're moving from glass into air, or water into air, or glass into water, then there'll be some angle for which there's no possible angle of refraction. And in that case, the light will be totally internally reflected. Finally, question 10. Draw a diagram to illustrate why bending an optical fiber can cause it to lose energy. That is, if we were to take an optical fiber and twist it very, very tightly, we would no longer get total internal reflection. Why not? Well, let's draw a diagram, shall we? Here we have an optical fiber, right? I've only drawn the core of it. If we were to draw the cladding, then we'd get an extra layer around each edge. Now, let's draw how the light comes into the optical fiber in the straight part. We'll have it coming in at a very large angle, which means that we'll get total internal reflection occurring, right? There we go. Total internal reflection. The light tries to pass into the cladding, but cannot because it is reaching the boundary between them at an angle larger than the critical angle. But now we get to the bend in the optical fiber. What's going to happen here? We continue on with our total internal reflection, but then suddenly trying to pass into the cladding at a very, very small angle. And this means that instead of getting total internal reflection, we'll simply refract and start bending away from the normal. And so in that case, we'll look like this. We will, of course, get a little bit of reflection happening every time. But more importantly, we're getting refraction happening every time, which means we're losing energy. Because we keep losing energy, and it's always the same proportion of energy lost, the amount of energy left inside the optical fiber gets less and less as we continue to pass through it. So this is because we're getting reflection and refraction and not total internal reflection. Well, that's the end of the questions. So in this section, we've covered how total internal reflection is useful to us. We can use it in optical fibers. Optical fibers are used for endoscopes and transmission of data, which of course are both quite useful in our world today.